be celebrating anything Commodore 64 on Instagram. Hashtag C64 November. And is hosted by Retro Slice, a retro gaming community based on Discord and Instagram chat. I will leave a link in the description below if you'd like to join or get involved, but it's a fabulous group for everything retro. But today for this one, I've decided to do my favourite developer on the system, Craft Gold, and take a look at all the games they've produced for the Commodore 64. So let's take a look. Kicking things off, we have Alley Cat, released in 1986 and published by USA. Now, Cold Andrew Braybrook is the mastermind behind this one, and this top down racer is a great game. We're shooting up elements with it too, and of course, you've got Steve Turner's intro music as well. <laughs> Bushido, released in 1989 and published by Firebird. Now Steve Turner and Jason Page are the guys behind this one and this game is based in ancient Japan where you have two clans in the field and your goal in this one is to infiltrate and conquer the other clan's fortress. Plenty of fun in it and adventure to it too. Deliverance Storm Lord 2 Released in 1990 and published by USA. Now the coder in this one is Nick Jones and the music is by Matt Gray and the music in this is absolutely unbelievable. Great tunes makes the game very atmospheric. The game itself has got great graphics too but it is a difficult game to conquer. Gribbly's Day Out, released in 1985 and published by Usain. No, this is another Andrew Braybrook classic and music by Steve Turner on the intro. Your goal in this game, you play as Gribbly and you gotta rescue all the infant griplets from a dangerous world. They also released Gribbly's Special Day Out, which was a budget re-release of the title a few years later, with subtle changes to the game. Head the Ball, released in 1989 and published by Usain. Now Jason Page coded and did the music for this game and this is a great little platformer. Your player's role is Ed and your goal is to find your girlfriend who has been kidnapped. Plenty of fun in this one for you to try. Intensity, released in 1988 and published by Firebird. And you guess it, this is another Andrew Braybrook classic. And music down once again by Steve Turner. In this top down action game, you play as a role as a skimmer. And your goal is to try and rescue all the astronauts by plotting markers on the ground so the spaceship and the drones can land to rescue them. It's a fun game, it took me a while to realize what I was doing, but yeah, great fun. <laughs> Ivan Ironman Stewart, Super Off-Road, released in 1990 and published by Virgin Mastertronics. This is a great arcade conversion to the Commodore 64. You've got great music by Jason Page as well. You've got great multiplayer action in it. And yeah, this game certainly keep you going for hours. Magnetron, released in 1988 and published by Firebird. Steve Turner does the coding and the music in this one, and this is a great isometric shoot em up. There's plenty of things to do in it, and your goal in it is to destroy each space station. Nice graphics as well, and great music. Morpheus. Released in 1987 and published by Rainbird. Another Andrew Braybrook game, this one, and music by Steve Turner. And this is a multi scrolling shoot em up. I thought the ship was a bit big at first when I first played it, but once you start playing it, you soon get into it. It's a fantastic game. A 
Orion, released in 1988 and published by Rocket. Now Rocket, a new son budget label. Coda, Gary J. Foreman's the guy behind this one, and Jason Page did the intro music. Yeah, this ain't a bad game, considering it's on a budget label. Your goal in it is simple. You gotta go to different planets, collecting all the minerals and chemicals to save the constellation of Orion. And on top of that as well, your character looks very much like a stormtrooper. Paradroid, released in 1985 and published by Usain. This top-down shooter was created by Andrew Braybrook. And your goal in this game is simple. You got eight ships to conquer, and each of the eight ships are full of droids, and you must destroy them all. The games are popular on the system back then. They even release Heavy Metal Paradroid, which was enhanced for the C128. And on top of that as well, apparently they actually released a Paradroid Competition Edition. Rainbow Islands, released in 1990, and this was published by Ocean. Yet, yeah, Rainbow Islands is a prime example of an arcade port done right onto the Commodore 64. It's an absolute classic. You've got Gary J. Foreman coded it, and also you've got Jason Page's tunes over the top. What more can I say? This is one of my favourite games of all time on a Commodore 64, and it's great fun. Ranarama, released in 1987 and published by Usain. Now Steve Turner and Gary J. Foreman are the guys behind this game. And as at the first glance, it's very similar to Gauntlet. And it is. It's a great game, the graphics might not look much, but once you get into the game itself, it's very addictive and fun. Soldier of Fortune. Released in 1988 and published by Firebird. Now creator John Cummings, the guy behind this one, and you've got Steve Turner's music as well. It's got great graphics, great gameplay, it's an adventure slash platformer, and it's one you certainly should try out. And the last game I want to show you is an absolute classic on C64, and it's a radium. Released in 1986 and published by Usa. Now, Cold Andrew Braybrook is back in this one, and the music is done by Steve Turner. If you want to play a shoot map just once on a Commodore 64, it's definitely this one. It's fast paced, great graphics and music, and it is difficult. But once you master it, you just keep coming back for more. If games are good, they even release a Radium Plus and answer the Commodore 128. Well that's it for this one, I hope you enjoyed the video, some cracking games in the lineup, and I'd like to say as well if you fancy joining the Retro Slice gaming community then I'll leave a link in the description below, and if you don't fancy doing that just leave me a message, bye for now.